setting up wireless for live events, avoiding interference and dropouts is everything. So today we're tackling a key question. What exactly is WMAS? How does it work? And what does it mean for the wireless coordinators? Also, is it WMAS or WMAS? Who knows? What's up y'all, Austin here, your friendly neighborhood wireless coordinator with Visionaire Wireless. And today, I want to answer the questions on everyone's mind. What is WMAS? If you've seen it floating around in headlines, but still don't really understand what it is, what it means, and whether it's something you should be worried or excited about, this one is for you. Let's get into it. So what exactly is WMAS? Well, WMAS stands for Wireless Multi-Channel Audio Systems. Historically, with wireless mic and IEM systems, each device needed its own narrow frequency carrier, legally bound to no more than 200 kilohertz wide. We had to account for things like intermodulation, channel spacing, and power management. But WMAS, it changes everything. Instead of every device needing its own frequency, WMAS puts multiple audio channels into one shared wideband carrier. In the US, licensed WMAS systems may use up to 6 MHz within a single TV channel across VHF and UHF channels 2 through 36, and 4 MHz in the 600 MHz duplex gap. That keeps each wideband carrier within a set broadcast channel. The system must be able to transmit at least three audio channels per one megahertz and at least 32 channels in a six megahertz block. In Europe, the rules are a little more relaxed, but they still have to maintain spectral efficiency. So what does this mean beyond the rules and the regulations? And how does this actually work? Let's talk about it. WMAS is how systems like Shure's Axiant Digital PSM and Sennheiser Spectera can pack tons of audio channels into one big RF block. Instead of each microphone or IAM getting its own frequency, WMAS takes a wide chunk of spectrum and splits it up into different protocols. One of those protocols being OFDM, or Orthogonal Frequency Division Multiplexing the same technology behind Wi-Fi and 5G. And then it organizes each audio stream using a protocol known as TDMA. That's Time Division Multiple Access, which chops it up into different time slots. Or it uses OFDMA. That's Orthogonal Frequency Division Multiple Access, which mixes both time and frequency. The result, cleaner transmission, way more channels, and much better spectrum efficiency, especially in crowded environments. And no, you won't be tested on this material. But it is good to know. With WMAS, latency will be a little higher than with traditional analog systems because of the extra digital processing but manufacturers can reduce that latency by trading off things like range and number of channels per carrier, depending on how they design their system. Most aim to keep latency under three milliseconds for both mics and IEMs, and that's only going to improve as the technology improves. So what's next? What's the future of WMAS? Over the next year or two, we'll probably see broad adoption, especially in broadcasts, touring, high channel count productions, and places where gear is rented, budgets are healthy, and people are eager to try new things. As WMAS gets cheaper and more mainstream, manufacturers may start to phase out legacy systems. And with more companies joining the party, expect rapid improvements in performance integration, and efficiency. And now, 
to the million dollar question on everyone's mind. What does this mean for us, the wireless coordinators? Will our jobs disappear? And honestly, no one knows for sure. Yes, some productions may try to cut costs and reduce crew counts, seeing WMAS as a more efficient solution. But overall, I don't see our roles going anywhere. In fact, I think our jobs are about to evolve into something even more complicated. With higher channel counts than a single RF block, productions won't shrink. They'll add more and more wireless devices. And with the FCC continuing to reallocate spectrum to telecom and broadband, there's still gonna be a need for someone to manage that increasingly crowded landscape, even with smarter gear. Someone still has to design it, deploy it, and of course, troubleshoot it. Our jobs may shift from chasing intermod and managing individual frequencies to managing wideband channels, configuring digital slots, tracking latency, and assigning microphones and packs. In a way, we're becoming wireless network engineers or communication specialists. But the bottom line, our value isn't going away, but we do have to grow with it. Adaptability has always been our strength. In the past, we had to adapt to shrinking RF environment. Now, we have to adapt to a changing role, the evolving job of the wireless coordinator. You can fight the wave or you can ride the wave. No pun intended. So that's where we're headed. WMAS is changing the game, but it's not replacing us. It's evolving us. Our role is becoming more technical, strategic, and honestly, more valuable. Stay curious, learn the new tools, be ready to adapt because the technology isn't slowing down and neither should we. Thanks for listening. If you found this helpful, share it with a fellow RF tech or production pro and follow for more breakdowns on the future of wireless audio. Until next time, keep learning, keep scanning, and don't be afraid of change. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in to this Q&A session brought to you by Visionaire Wireless. I am your host and wireless coordinator, Austin W. If you found this helpful, check out more behind the scenes tech tips at www.thetourbuslife.com and subscribe to our channel at youtube.com slash at tourbuslife. Stay connected, stay interference free, and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.